All right, so now we're sharing. Those were the dates. All right, so we're going to start, and I've already kind of pre did some stuff here. Um, remember, we always want to kind of start with kind of inspiration. Okay, um, and there's a bazillion things online along with books. Um, and again, these are kind of, you know, I want to say half of these are probably student projects just put up. Um, you're going to find some ideas on some templates that are available. And again, um, you know, this kind of gives you a good way of kind of starting to lay things out. Um, composing, um, you know, here we have, you know, pictures with full bleeds. You can see them getting into the gutter um, and then kind of quite an open area with a title. Um, other ideas here is a nice big background picture that's kind of going on. Um, some smaller ideas of, you know, how do you put the pictures in there and how do you call out certain things? Um, so look and find something that kind of works for you. And like I said, it doesn't need to, it, you don't need to figure, like use this layout for everything, right? I mean, you can pick and choose and that's kind of what we're gonna be doing today is again, picking and choosing layouts. Um, Again, it's quick visual references to kind of keep our mind in the right direction. So we're not kind of going down a path of, I don't know, um, you know, someplace we shouldn't go. And also um, allows us to kind of uh, think creatively. Um, so it's just kind of being inspired, just like, you know, when you look at, you know, you go out and you, you see a beautiful sunset, you know, it just kind of like lets your mind go to different places and um, hopefully inspires you a little bit. and let you think about things. Um, and again, bring that ideas of design into play, right? So find your inspiration for this. So for today's um, article, I found two and I'm gonna go through those and we're gonna be doing an article on, we're gonna pick the starry night. So I still have to find the text on that. Um, but why I grabbed these two um, and the reason why, and let me go through those. Um, one, I think this is kind of a nice little single page layout. Um, and you could even use this as a second page. We're dealing with these two pages here. Um, but I, I grabbed this one too, because one, I really like the layout of it. I'll move it over here so you can see it a little bit better. Um, it's kind of nice. But I want to do something like this where we get this kind of um, color overlay box with the um, dropped opacity and we're starting to see the picture come through. So I want to kind of play with that and we're going to take a picture um, and we'll make it black and white and such so we can kind of see how that works. Um, and I think that'll look be kind of cool. Uh, I also want to take a picture and I want to um, have the text curve around it. So I'm going to do that. So I'm, I'm thinking of doing a layout where we have a, a large main picture, a short little headline, and then some body copy. Um, and then a picture that's kind of curving into this kind of copy. And then we're going to continue down here uh, with a little bit of a, maybe a three column spread down here. And we're gonna do a little text box pull quote down in here. So it's kind of, again, these are just kind of my inspiration to kind of, you know, I wasn't thinking about this, you know, an hour ago, I went and found some images um, and it just kind of gets your mind going um, into places it could be. So I'm gonna delete these out of the way for now because we we're good with that. And again, um, let me know as we're working if you're, um, you know, running into questions and such. Um, I'm just going to copy this little text box. I don't think that's going to work. I'm just going to center it. I can I can tell by centering here, looking at my my points that were, were pretty close there. I'm looking at my edges. I think we're close on that. Um, in reality, I would want to um, measure it all out or do a, a grid with three, but for the sake of, of class and speed, we're going to do that. And I got a pretty open um, gutter or, or gap between those. And I'm going to actually take my gap tool and I want to tighten that up. So I'm just 
holding down the command T T as I'm doing this and pulling three, eight, three, three, four. And I'm gonna pull this down to point three, four, two, seven, two. Okay, so they are the same right now. So I just wanted to kind of bring that gap down a little bit. So I was just quickly using the gap tool and I'm gonna quickly click all three of these, make sure we're still center and we are on that. Um, so we're gonna do that and I'm gonna have some kind of photo up here. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna potentially have a curved photo in here. Um, and I'm gonna take these three text boxes I'm gonna copy them down into this other page for now, since I already built it. Let me just kind of put it in here as kind of a placeholder um, for when I start to put this thing together. Um, so I need to get an article and we're gonna do stars. Um, and we're gonna, let me just do star photography because we're gonna talk about photography next week. And we can even do that, talk about star photography. And I'm just gonna grab some text here. We really got how long is this article? It when it grabs the panel on the other side, don't you? All right, one more minute, build a text box. Drop some text in here. Um, let me get a little bit more, because I think I might need a little more. Again, it's just my text holder, text. All right, so that should be enough text to fill this article. Um, and I'm gonna need some photos. So we're on this star photography site. Um, and let's see if I can grab some of these and I may not be able to because they're kind of a light box. Let's see. Do it the easy way. So just grabbing some photos. Um, again, you would look for kind of the best quality you could, but you know, for us, for demo, we're just kind of, of picking and choosing. Um, and we can kind of go through also some of these kind of um, parameters for shooting stars. Anybody shoot stars? Anybody done that? Star photography, astrophotography? They are amazing, but uh, I, I don't have a good camera. <laughs> All right, well, by next week, you're going to know what to get, so you, you can get one, definitely. Yes, sir. Anybody else done any star photography? Um, it's really kind of, I mean, I, I, I like doing it. I'm not, I'm, I don't know, I'm okay at it at this point. <clears throat> um, I haven't got the circles down yet, and it's basically compositing a bunch of pictures together, looking at the North Star to do that. Um, but I, I'm able to capture stuff like this and I really haven't gotten a rainbow yet with the Milky Way. Um, again, it's just kind of positioning, getting the right spot, but um, I, I feel pretty comfortable doing it. Um, but, but more importantly, um, just kind of sitting out there and, and being in basically nature because you, you can't do this in the city because there's, there's, it's just too much light pollution, um, too much outside lights. Um, so just being, you know, kind of in the dark with just the stars and the Milky Way above you, it's just kind of an awesome experience. So, um, you know, whether the pictures come out or not, half the time I don't care. I mean, of course you want your pictures, but um, just the fact that you're, you're out there and you're able to look at the Milky Way and kind of see it is cool. Um, and, and it kind of looks, I mean, it pretty much looks like this. I mean depending on where you are and again, how, how much you process or do process, um, you'll definitely see something like this picture where you can see the Milky Way, but um, with photography, you can kind of get a little bit better 
with it, a little bit more enhancement um, because it's like that long exposure. Okay, so a little bit longer exposure, but you can you definitely see this, um, and it is quite um, amazing to to see the Milky Way because I mean, so many we we all kind of live in the city, and we never get to um, see the Milky Way. I mean, think about it. You know, a man first started living on the Earth, whatever you could see the Milky Way every night. No big deal. Now it's kind of I think a big deal to go and. Um, be able to see that and, and we're kind of lucky that we can get to um, places of darkness pretty quick um, going out into the desert and such um, or up into the mountains um, you can get away from the light which is kind of nice um, it, it, back east where I grew up it was kind of hard and you just really didn't see the Milky Way at all um, but, and there's some pretty cool places out here to look at that but we'll talk about that and kind of some camera settings. So, you know, those that have been shooting may want to go into that. Again, it's not as hard as you think. Trust me, it's really not. A lot of it is um, Photoshop or Lightroom processing those things. So, um, but um, it's good. It's fun. It really is cool just to kind of see this stuff. So um, I've got my photos. Let me just kind of zoom out, get some room here. I'm going to scale these down just for now. These are pretty big. Yeah, I'm just kind of using these as kind of reference points. Uh, and we're going to kind of work those into um, this article. So we've got our text, we've got our images for this. Um, and I think we're about ready to get going on this third design. Um, so like I said, I want to do one with a circle where the text kind of flows around the picture. Um, and then again, I'm looking at my reference here and again, it's really small, but it's okay. I'm just kind of just kind of visual reference. So what I'm thinking of is um, putting one like really nice and dramatic picture right up in here. And I'm gonna just kind of left justify it just to kind of keep it off off center, right? I mean, sometimes things are too balanced and, and you don't want that. Um, so I'm gonna, let me go, I'm gonna move it this way so I can put that brown picture in a little bit easier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a round um, ellipse, okay? And I'm just going to kind of draw it in. Holding the shift key gives me a nice circle. And I'm going to say that's about a good size right there. And I think I'm going to grab this picture and take that in. So I'm just going to copy it. And then I'm going to just kind of paste into. Uh, and we're actually pretty good there. I'm going to move it around a little bit because I want the arch to show up. And this is from Arches National Park. They call this delicate arch. Um, it's the, probably the most famous, most famous arch rock formation in the, I'm gonna say in the world by far. Um, but arch, Arches has numerous other um, arch formations and stuff that are there. So um, this one's big, but there's bigger. So, um, well worth the time to get there. That's out in Moab, Utah. Um, yeah, say maybe probably about eight hours ish to get there. Let me just let me just Google Moab. And do driving directions. And home. Let me just see. 10 hours, 10, 12 hours, depending on the way. This one, more southern route. This actually takes you close to the Grand Canyon. So from here, Flagstaff area, drive up about an hour or so into the Grand Canyon. We cut through here. This is the um, Navajo Reservation area, uh, Monument Valley. You've seen those in all the old Western movies kind of bringing in the Southern route, but this one kind of goes through Vegas and then back out 70. So, you know, 
just figured a good a good day's drive could stop along the way zion was over in here zion national park kind of a nice stop on the way um but definitely a cool fun place to visit so um and you can see you can do some nice star photography there um and this is basically um using some light to kind of light the arch up some people frown upon it um i don't think there's an official rule against it uh, but some people might give you a hard time i don't know i don't have a problem with people lighting up it and honestly to light something up like this we're talking maybe one second half a second of light um, it doesn't take a lot to um, be able to do that with your camera you'd be you'd be kind of amazed um, all right so i'm going to get my text down here let's start dropping the text in Again, we don't have any formatting on this. Um, there's no um, typography or font choices. I'm gonna, you know what? I think there's a little bit of room up here. I'm gonna put this here just, and then I'm gonna come over to here. So I'm gonna have this article continue, continue. And continue so that's where it's going to stop so we're going to leave it there i know i'm going to do some formatting with this so it's going to push it down so i think we're going to actually be pretty close with that um so let's start with the title um and i haven't put that in but i'm going to do a um text box in here i'm going to kind of draw it across you know what i'm going to i'm going to draw put it here for now i'm going to move it up That starry night. I'm gonna pull this up into here. And I'm gonna give this a nice white. Totally work on that. And I'm just gonna look through my my type choices. Um, let's see what I got going on in here. I'm just going to put this because I've got that picture and I can definitely utilize that. I'm just trying to figure out where I want to put this on the photograph. To make it kind of work. And I'm going to play with it right about there for now. Um, and then we're going to get into the article. Now I want to do a text wrap around this photo, right? So I don't want the words to be in this case, behind the photo because you can't read them, right? So um, I'm gonna do a text wrap. And right now it's going around the box, okay? Which I don't want, I want to actually go around the object. So wrap around the object instead. And next let me go back. I didn't want the object, I want the Shape here, and I want to do a little border. So, what that did when I touched the object, um, InDesign tries to kind of think of look at your pictures and see if there's something in it. So it was trying to pick out the arch, um, and it was going to basically let the text wrap around the arch itself. But that wouldn't help us because we would have overlap with text onto the photo. So I didn't want I, that's not going to work. So right now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm having the text wrap around the circle, but again, I wanna build in that border. Okay, so right now I'm building in a border of 0.18, to put it down a little bit to 0.125, uh, because I never, again, I never want the words to kind of touch the picture. So if I was in here, um, and I don't want the text here up, up top where it's kind of touching the picture, Right, that's not something I want because when you look at that close up, that's just kind of a bad place. Okay, so you always want to have that kind of a little bit of a gap, a little bit of cushion 
around your, your photos, okay? Um, very, very rarely will we have the text touching the photographs um, in this particular case. So you can see I've done a little bit of a wrap around here uh, with that text. And you can see that by this light blue line as to where it's kind of wrapping. Um, and what it's doing, it's not gonna let text get in there. So in this case, it's gonna be pushing text over or uh, around it. So I'm gonna actually select all of this and I'm gonna go to a justified and that's gonna really, really show that up pretty nicely. Okay, so by going to a full justified, you can really see that text wrapping around this um, quite nicely. We do get a couple gaps, like we, this is kind of like a river, it's kind of creating, we, we can come back through and fix that. Um, but you wanna kind of do the overall things first, and then you're gonna come back and fix the smaller things, which is like this river, and then we've got this um, blank line at the top, which we don't want. Um, and this did copy with the paragraphing breaks. Okay, so we've got a blank white line between them. So I'm gonna kind of go through, and I'm gonna to not to worry too much about um, the hyphenations, um, they built into it. Um, I'm just kind of looking to make sure there's nothing really, really terrible there. And I'm gonna come back here, I'm gonna get rid of this line first. And that worked out nice here. And you can see it worked up here. So I got a little bit of a gap there. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can fake that out. Oops. Um, so a couple of things I could do. I could potentially move the photo up just a little bit. There we go. And see, I did that, but I got now this huge gap in there and that was just kind of moving it up one. So I don't want that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this line and I'm gonna reduce uh, the, the, the tracking on it to see if I can get that to pull in. So we did that and that's not too bad. It's a minus 20, just kind of playing there. All right, that's a little bit better. We do have a hyphenation, but we'll, we'll live with that. Um, and that's okay, maybe, I'm gonna just see if I put a space, that was too much. So again, I'm just trying to make things work from a visual standpoint. Uh, so I'm, I'm okay with this right now, but it's a little awkward where we've got this gap here pretty small and then we have this kind of big gap in here um, so it may be something I'm going to come back through and rework some things so what ended up happening is down in here we've got a zero because it basically pulled up from uh, the previous lines so I'm going to put that at a, a minus 40 also and see if that helps a little bit Again, it's just trying to find some visual sanity to it all. Um, you can't fix everything, but you can fix a lot of things. And that's really kind of what we're trying to do. It's kind of come with this kind of um, compromise where we, we, were, we got the look we want um, and it's not too bad. And I think, you know, even zooming out, I think we can read that pretty well. That gap is not as bad as it seems. Um, and then we've got this other layout over here, which we're gonna to start to do. So, um, all right, so that's kind of that layout there. And let me just look at this on preview, to see how that looks. Um, that's not too bad. Again, I really like how the photo is um, round and how the text is kind of wrapping around it. I think that kind of makes a nice statement. Um, so again, think of these are kind of things you can work with. You don't always have to have squares and rectangles and everything straight and rigid. You can kind of break it up a little bit um, just to kind of create some visual emphasis and you know um, enhance the visual of it all, right? Just kind of makes it more interesting to look at and read. Questions so far, anybody? All right. All right, so let's go back to this last one. And I said I want to do a black and white on that. So I've used this picture and I'm just gonna put that over there. I didn't use this one. Um, in fact, I'm just gonna open up a picture in Photoshop. Let's see if everything can saved up recently.
All right, we'll open this one. So I'm gonna convert this to black and white to do this kind of thing that I'm gonna do. Um, so I, I can just do it here, right? I mean, I don't need a whole lot of, of um, craziness. All right, so I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna do it the old fashioned way mode, black and white. And looking at the um, defaults. So I'm just gonna quickly go through some of the black and white defaults. And again, these, when you have these colors, it's basically if you had taken this picture with black and white film and you had a green filter, you would get this effect. Okay, so Photoshop is going back to some of the old days of when we actually shot film to give us some ideas. So I'm just kind of looking to see which one I think might work for us in this. Well, actually, the lighter is looking pretty good. Max white, let me just see there. Let me go with the max white because we're going to play with this in, in, um, in, in InDesign. And, uh, I'm just going to, I'm just copying. I don't really want to save this as such. Let me make sure it came in over here. Okay, so that did copy, that's good. We go back to Photoshop. I'm just gonna close this without saving because I don't wanna get rid of my original. Um, so here, we're, what we're doing is basically we're, we're tinting, we're gonna kind of tint with another box. So I'm gonna pull this smaller. And we'll come back to the text on that in a second. So I'm just gonna pull that there. And then I want to fit that. We are at the bottom. Okay. I'm just looking at that picture, make sure I didn't cut too much of it off. All right. So we, we're here with the photograph. Um, Again, I would normally save it as a black and white and then import or place the picture. I just kind of copy and paste it. Um, so it works, but again, from a printing standpoint, if I was to go to print this out at a commercial printer, I definitely would want to make sure the images are there um, and they're of good quality and I'm bringing them in, that type of thing. Now. Just kind of quickly doing something here. All right. So what we're looking at here is basically kind of a translucent box and there's some text in there. Um, and they did like a nice little caption here with a little arrow, like a, a red line, that's kind of nice. Um, so I'm just kind of start with a box and I'm gonna kind of extend it off like this and I'm gonna make it red also. Um, so what I'm looking at here is kind of dropping the opacity down on that. And you can start to see the photo coming through, okay? Um, so you're, what you're trying to do is kind of get this kind of uber look. Um, and I think that red needs to be a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna make a nice bright red here. Still kind of need it. Let me just see if I can get it a little bit brighter. A little more intense. That one I'm not using now. Yes, okay. All right, so we're here with our box, and you can see what we're doing is we're basically kind of giving a little bit of a color shift to the photograph, um, just to kind of bring out some visual emphasis. 
um, that creates some kind of cool text. And I'm going to actually take a um, a paragraph out of here and um, just kind of call this as my pull quote. I'm going to I want to leave it in there, but I want to make basically make a new box down here that has that quote in it, and we're going to enlarge that. Basically, what we're doing is kind of bringing emphasis to a particular part of the story. Okay, and we call that a pull quote. And that's here, I'm gonna put a box, I've got some room. Typically with the pull quotes, they're a little bit larger um, in type size. And typically they're also, um, you know, a little bit bolder and that such. So let me go back here, what are we at? Did we Minion, this is not Minion, what did we do up here? We did Minion Pro too. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually pick a new font. I don't want the Minion there. I'm gonna pick something a little bit different for this pull quote. Man, that all caps is not, it's just not working. New so looks good. And okay, we're going to keep that there. And we're at 14, pump it up a little bit. Um, I'm going to give it definitely some quotes. So I'm just going to put in the quotes. Oops, oops. kind of does that. And I'm gonna just open it up just a hair because I put in that quote and it just kind of threw it off. There we go. Um, we've got one, two hyphens. I'm gonna see. And again, I got the whole page to work with. I'm just gonna open it up a little bit. There we go, that's kind of nice. Um, and I'm gonna pull it down. I'm gonna kind of center it with a little bit, have it a little bit top high. So I'm not quite centering up and down in the box here, but it's a, it's a little bit high in there. Um, so it's a little bit less uh, the gap or margin at the top as opposed to the bottom here. And it looks like we're pretty close right left in there. And again, all this can be measured out and, and guided out and that type of thing. Um, and then we have the text there. Let me just kind of look at this on preview. See how that's looking. That's kind of different, right? The nice little kind of little visual breaking it up type of thing. Um, we've got kind of a high emphasis here on the Joshua tree and kind of see the stars and such happening in the background. Um, and then let me come back to my text now and get that all straightened out. So looking at this kind of quickly, things that are issues is we've got this uh, one line up top yonder but we also have this here, which has been kind of a subhead. So I'm going to bold that out. We'll go semi bold, and we're going to push that up a point. Um, that's not too bad. Again, you're always kind of evaluating as you go. Do I maybe want this a color? Maybe. Let me pull that and make it out of color. See how that looks. No, that's nice. It kind of pulls it out a little bit more. Um, now my next question is, do I want to gap after, um, maybe, maybe not. Let me just, I'm going to drop this down a moment. So I'm going to reduce that leading here a little bit. So I want a gap, but I don't want a full fledged gap. So what I'm doing is I'm individually kind of taking that line and reducing the leading. So I've got a gap below light up the foreground, but it's not a full space, right? It's not a full return where this is what we have over here. Um, and I think that works and it actually helps me out because now we get the end of the article, we're not um, extending it out, okay? Um, it, it gives me a little bit of a, a bump here at the bottom. You can see where this line doesn't quite line up with that. So what I might do is increase the letting on the line above, right now it's at 14.4. If I just kind of bump it up a little bit, 
I don't think you're gonna notice in the end that that gap is bigger. Um, if you do, you can kind of split the difference, right? I can give it a little bit here. So we've got 14, we're gonna go that to 16 and I'm gonna add a little bit up here. That's at 18 now. I'm gonna put this to 18. And now we're back to the bottom here. So everything's kind of lining up here and here. And what I did was I just kind of added a, a basically four points of extra space in here, but visually you'll never see it, right? So mechanically it's in there, but you would never see it visually if one was to kind of look at it. So it's kind of a way that we can um, cheat, cheat in our layouts. Um, and even if this was a super long, you're working on a 200 page magazine, um, you can get back in there and do this kind of stuff. Okay. Um, there's, there's, there's time. Okay. You're, you're never expected to do a whole magazine layout in an afternoon. Okay. So there is time to kind of work it in, but really it's kind of a process. <coughs> you're going to kind of drop your items in, get them in place, put your text in, kind of do some basic formatting. Um, and then you're gonna come back and finesse it as you go along. Um, and in this case, we finesse um, the letting between a couple lines in order to get things to line up at the bottom. Okay, so, um, but that's kind of like the last step you would do. You wouldn't wanna do that in the beginning because things are other things we're gonna change with our um, formatting. Make sense? Um, okay, so you can see this came in. Yeah, makes sense to me. Okay, um, and now we're, I, I'm gonna say we're kind of done. Things we need to add, and we'll do this, I think, next week. At some point, we'll slip in um, page numbering, um, some footers, headers, um, things that I mean, should we put on the website. Um, put up that example. So down here in, in our, our page, web page, um, this kind of things that you can look for, right? So there's the, the footer, page number, um, AKA the folio, which is like, what edition is it? Um, we did a pull quote. We didn't do any image capturing yet. So we'll do that. We've done headlines. Um, we may do a kick, it was kind of like a precursor to the headline, what's gonna be on. We definitely have worked in some by, um, white space we didn't put any bylines in like who wrote the article. So that is something we probably definitely would have done um, had we written these articles. So um, let me see, we'll, we'll put those in next week, right? We're gonna to basically just kind of add in a couple little bylines to these and we'll kind of look at those positioning. So we'll go back through those kind of elements next week. Um, and we'll also play with the master page for adding a page number and stuff like that on there. But I, I think we're pretty good here with the, our little layout. Um, again, we get a little bit of tweaking and we can get to that come next week. Um, so we've got, you know, a couple little layouts um, and you can see it didn't take us too, too long to do these. Um, we, you know, got some interesting things like the curve here and we've got some call out um, thing. We got some nice open space, nice white space happening here and some nice play with the text. Um, again, kind of working on some different ways of, of building this all together. Um, and we have a cover up here. All right, so um, that's really what we're gonna be doing for the project. Again, we're gonna add in the page numbers and, and that kind of stuff next week. But um, that's kind of it. So questions, Who, does anybody not know what they're doing? Meaning I'm doing magazine on flowers, whatever it is, is anyone not, to that point yet, everybody's got their subject matter. Yes, yes. I hear nothing, I assume. For the most part. 
Every, everybody knows what subject you're doing. Okay, got a couple. Of I'm gonna be working on my 30. I'm just gonna be making a magazine out of my 30 day project. Oh, that's fine. No, that's totally fine. I'm just want to make sure everybody. And like somebody's like, oh, I don't know what to do yet. I'm not talking about <laughs> InDesign. Obviously, I think hopefully you guys can do that. Um, we've been going through it, but I just want to make sure you you've got your subject matter. So everybody has their subject matter. Okay. Questions on this project, where we're going? Are we writing our own? No, 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 you're not writing your own articles. Um, you can, by all means, if you're a writer. But what we're really looking at is um, just kind of cutting and pasting like I did. But I would say copy articles that are kind of related to what your story is. Um, it just kind of helps visually to pull it all together. So instead of me um, putting an, uh, an article on, on flowers today, I pick one to go with the stars idea because that's what we're doing, okay? Um, so get your articles to kind of relate. It's a couple seconds on Google, no big deal, okay? Um, and likewise, if you have your own photos, by all means, please guys use them. If you have your own illustrations and you want to use them, by all by do it, okay? I mean, be creative and use your own work. Um, but if not, you can find images and such online. Again, just kind of look for the better image qualities so you're not getting things that are pixelated and you know look all weird when you do it. So let me just go back to the share. So zooming in, oops, what am I doing there? You know, you just don't want things that are going to look totally, totally bad. Not like like this is a bad picture, but you can see where it's all kind of pixelated and and such. You can barely even read that, and that could be the image quality. Remember, if you're getting pictures that don't look good, look at the um, display performance. Okay, and we are on high quality, so this should look pretty good if it was good. But I got grabbed it from the internet, so I know it's really bad. So it's all kind of pixelated. So, you know, grab quality pictures where you're not having that now. This is a, um, a little bit better picture. You can see it's sharper, right? It, it, yeah, there's pixelation back here with the stars, but for the most part, this is pretty sharp. Um, this is not too bad. Let's look up here at the other photos we've used so far. This one, we're getting a little bit of pixelization. I'm just double checking the image quality. Yeah, so we're in high quality and I basically defaulted to that. So, you know, would I, use, I would I use this in real life? No, right? Because I can tell you the image quality is kind of kind of crappy with the pixelization that's going on. But, you know, for this project, what we're doing, it's okay. But you want to make sure that you're at least at that kind of quality. Otherwise, you, things are going to look really, really bad. I um, mean, you're not going to be sure why. So um, try to pick your images. And when you're over here in, um, Google, right? Remember, go back up to your um, images and your tools, and you can do size and do large. Okay, and that's going to cut out some of the really, really bad pictures um, that that are in there. And what it's doing is kind of looking at the the size of the picture as to will it work. Um, and you can click, and it will typically tell you on there where is it going to show up here? Here. 1300 by 860, 867, that's pretty big, right? Same thing, 1300, 1100. Had we turned that off, again, we're gonna get some pictures that are gonna be small. 800 by 11, 600 by 666. So again, when we get these smaller numbers, we're gonna get really kind of pixelated kind of images. And again, they're 600 by 400. They're perfectly fine for the internet, but when you start to put them on a page and blow them up, they're gonna get pixelated really, really quick. So, you know, you won't get these 600 pictures, 600 uh, DPI or pixels if you do large, okay? That's gonna cut out most of those pictures that are really, really crappy, okay? Um, and it's just going to make your project look better. Okay. Okay. Right. Questions? 
Did I come in? Let me just double check our attendance here. Um, All right, questions so far. So we're gonna do photography next week and we'll finish up this with a couple page numbering and that kind of stuff. Um, think about anything else you wanna cover, um, whether it be, like I said, related to Photoshop, Illustrator or InDesign or something quote, artistic like, like photography that we're gonna do. So um, just let me know. And like I said, we'll, we'll get that put into uh, your talks for the day. Give you some more info. Questions? I have none. None. Eh? Who else? Don't be shy. You can speak up or type a chat. All right. So, what are we at? So, what I'd like is we'll just say sometime next week. Um, send me a quick PDF of, of your work so I can kind of just make sure you're going along okay. <laughs> I know it's not necessarily done, but just a quick PDF. And let me just go back to my share. I'll just show you how to do that really quick. So here we are on our article. All right, we're all kind of there. Just know anything that's off the page won't show up when it gets saved for this PDF. Um, we're saved already. Um, I'm just gonna do a quick export. And right here, I'm just a PDF, okay? And I'm gonna put it in, this is my sample. We're gonna just replace it. It's gonna say, do you wanna replace? Yes. Um, smallest file size is fine. Again, I'm just looking at it just from a quick reference. Um, and that's fine because when you, if you do larger, it kind of lets you do some editing later. And I don't need that. I just need small um, and export. There's over text on three, which is saying the text continues on. Um, and that's here. I can actually see it. That little red cross is going on. I'm just going to ignore that because I know text continues and I'm not really worried about it from the article shape. Um, there was a blend that doesn't match color. Okay, no big deal there. And then I'm going to go to my Acrobat and let me just open that up. What did I call this file? Magazine samples, here we go. There's our PDF, this is today. Yep, yeah, right? Um, it's 768K, so it's like really tiny, right? You can, you can zap this into an email. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of look at it. So you just kind of send it over and it will make the spreads. Um, so again, I'm just kind of looking at it. I just wanna kind of, so wherever you are next week, some point, save it as a PDF and email that to me um, so I can just kind of look it over and if there's any like major issues, like, I don't know, the color is wrong, it's not, it's not readable, um, or there's like text overhanging on the edge, those kind of things I can just kind of tell you about. Okay, so um, get that to me for next week. And what we'll do is we'll just take about, you know, 10 minutes at the end of each class to kind of go through any issues that I'm seeing at this point, you know, widows, orphans, kind of things hanging out or, um, you know, the picture's just not working, whatever. Okay. So it's kind of a quick progress of your project for next week. At some point, Tuesday or Thursday, get that to me as a PDF, smallest file size. So again, from um, InDesign, let's go to export and you'll be able to save this as smallest file size. Okay. So that'll be coming for next week. All right, anything else today, guys? All right, have, a, have an awesome weekend. All right, work on these. You got time, so don't stress about it. Um, you know we're gonna put the, you have to send me some samples next week and then we'll, we'll get these finished up. Two weeks, I think, left. Is that right? I think it's two weeks.
Sorry, I said that the, we're May. Yeah. Our last class meeting is on the 20th. 20th, yes. Yeah, so meeting. we have two more weeks. So four more classes. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. Um, Bye. Everyone. Have fun. Be creative. We'll see you Tuesday. All right. See you Tuesday. Thank you. Bye.